Today we're going to finish the half leather library binding. Last week we left off having done the corners and today we're going to pick up at the spine. This book doesn't have headbands or end bands, either machine made and stuck on or sewn on. Instead we're going to insert some cord into the turn ins at the head and tail of the spine and form a nice head cap. The square of this book is three millimeters, the square being the distance the boards protrude past the text block. The leather is a bit under a millimeter thick, so I'm using a cotton cord that's about two millimeters thick. So that will uh, fill in the distance or equivalent of the square. So I've just cut two pieces to fit along the top of the spine. So we'll put the leather on the spine now and we'll do the usual thing of moistening the outside of the leather. It was extremely hot the day I did this and, and very dry as well so I was really struggling just to keep the, the leather moist. We'll give the leather one coat of paste and then we'll let that paste uh, soak in for a while and I'll go do a, I get my tools ready uh, for later jobs while that soaks in. I'll face it uh, while it's soaking in so that it doesn't dry out. Uh, facing being folding the leather over on itself but without uh, forming a crease. I don't want to crease the leather. I just want to stop, uh, reduce the evaporation and stop the paste from drying or setting. Whenever the leather starts to dry out I'll just give it a, a bit of a light sponge. I'll prepare the cord for the head caps by giving them a, a thorough soaking in paste. While using paste and keeping the leather moist gives me plenty of time to work. I don't want to muck around too much so I'm going to get my tools ready. A couple of 4mm knitting needles, my sharpened bone folder for pushing the turn ends in, a piece of uh, cord with a slip knot uh, for setting the head caps, uh, my bone folder that's really quite rounded for pushing in the joint. So I've got everything ready. So we'll uh, put the leather on the spine now. We'll give it another paste out. I'll also paste up the spine of the book and uh, onto the boards a little bit. Make sure I get some paste down into the, the joint, but only where the, um, the tab is that goes into the split board. I don't want to get the paste down onto the inside of the book like I did just then. Now when I'm positioning the book on the spine leather, I normally put my head right over the top to make sure that I've got the turn ends e even at the head and the tail and the right amount of leather on either side of the book. It was a bit hard to do because of the where the camera is, but I got it reasonably close. I think I um, got a little bit uh, more leather at one end of the book than the other, but that's not the end of the world. So once that in, that's in position, you can uh, flip it over and then pull the leather down onto the side of the book. Always being careful not to dig your fingernails in and to pull it evenly. Now push the leather down with the 
uh, rather wide bone folder into the joint. The leather will continue to move around a little bit as we're working. It'll come off the line a bit. Uh, and that's fine because it's paste. We've got plenty of time to make small adjustments later. But we want to get the turn-ins done and everything in its final configuration before we start making any final small adjustments. So we'll, be, we'll start by doing uh, one of the turn-ins. Now I normally work on the edge of the bench, uh, so this board is just to simulate the edge of the bench. So we'll put that cord in at the head cap. Now the hardest part I find is to stop pushing that cord down into the spine. But once that's in position, we'll turn the leather over a little bit. We'll just hook it underneath the top of the spine, just enough so that it stays there, and then we'll put some paste in on that side of the leather that doesn't have any paste in on it at the moment. There is paste on the spine, but we want to make sure that, that uh, there's sufficient paste for that to stick to the spine. So we'll add some extra now. And what, once that's done, we'll push that over the piece of cord and then down under the spine. And then we'll start to bring the turn-ins over the boards as well and push those down into that gap that we left uh, between the boards and the tab that was inserted into the split boards. I soon realized that the cord has gone too, down, too far down the spine, and that's fine, so we can just uh, turn the, pull the turn in back out and start again. We've got plenty of time to do this and get it right. I'll just put a bit more paste on it because it's starting to dry out. And I'll use the bone folder to push that uh, leather down. The only thing with doing that is uh, you will push the paste off the leather as well. So if you do that, then you might want to go back and add a little bit of paste. But once you're happy with it, uh, spin the book around and do the other end exactly the same. Now I'm very sorry about the soft focus that's going to come up for a while. I, I just assume it was the heat. Uh, I don't know why the camera was playing up this day, but uh, I know the heat was definitely getting to me, so I'm not surprised that the camera was a bit unhappy as well. Now before I form the head caps, I want to make sure the leather's pretty much in its final position on the spine. And to be sure of that, I want to force the leather down into the joint. So I'm just going to nip the book um, sort of gently but firmly at the same time with the knitting needles, the 4mm knitting needles in the joints. So I'm just going to put that in the press for a, a, a well, it's five minutes. I'm going to do it for five minutes. I don't want to leave it uh, too long because I don't want the head caps to dry out. So once the uh, joint, the leather is in the joint well, I'll put the piece of cord around uh, the book in the spine groove. And I'll pull that reasonably tight because I want it to hold the leather in uh, at the head and the tail when I uh, tease out the head cap. Johnson suggests two shapes for the head cap and I'm going to go for the one on the right so that sort of slopes into the book. So I'll start by pulling the leather outwards to pull the 
the cord down onto the text block and so once the leather is pulled out to the sides then I'll start to shape the head cap. Once you're happy with the head cap, uh, flip it over and do the other end. In the hot weather I normally have a fan going and I normally turn it off when I'm filming but I uh, forgot to turn it off uh, while I was doing the head cap so that's the background noise. I've tried to turn turn it down without uh, getting rid of the background noise completely but uh, that hum is the fan in the background. Once you've formed the head caps then take the cord off and then I like to just give it one last press with the uh, knitting needles in place just to make sure that the joint grooves are nicely set. I'm only going to do this for about five minutes. Put uh, fences or barrier sheets in between uh, the boards and the text block. So after five minutes I'll take the uh, bricks and the boards off and then I'll just uh, put the book on the edge of the board and then let it dry overnight. Okay, now we have an option of filling in the side panels. So I've just uh, got a piece of manila card there and I've put it in and tested to see if uh, what that feels like. So Johnson shows this in example two here. He actually pairs the edge of the card to go over the leather. Uh, I don't go to that extent, but uh, I do like filling in the, the um, sides. So I'm going to do that. And that also means that if the leather was uh, a little bit uneven in that um, maybe it extended a little bit further on one side of the book than the other, I can adjust that by just having the cloth go over the one side more than the other. And if I've filled in the boards, then you won't notice it. Um, if I don't fill in the boards, I need to trim the leather up. So I, I just like uh, filling in the boards. I think it looks nice. And it also means that a lot of the wear goes onto the cloth rather than the leather if the book's going to go in and out of the shelves a lot. So I um, to cut the manila to the right size, I, I flipped it over onto a couple of boards and used my knife to mark it. Uh, I cut it out to the size, the height and the width and then I um, made a slight adjustment here and then I will uh, transfer the corners and then cut the corners off. It wouldn't be the first time that I've cut too much material off on the corners but that's okay then I just have a really good template to get it right on my second try. And because I'm about to cover up my front and back marks, I'll transfer those marks to the manila card. Now if the leather at the spine or on the corners isn't uh, really straight, you can make small adjustments just to trim, trim the leather uh, where it's sticking out a little bit. Hopefully it's not too much. If it, it's a lot, then you want to trim it at a bit of a bevel so that it matches the bevel on the pairing.
Now from experience I know that uh, using this manila card with PVA means that I'm going to have almost no stretch. Um, that's something you probably want to test for yourself with your materials and your adhesive. Uh, and if you do have a bit of stretch, then you want to trim uh, the card accordingly to just give a, a maybe a half millimeter gap. I couldn't imagine a, a card stretching too much. Now, if you make a small mistake, like the uh, card extends past the board, you can just trim it. And if it's a little bit short, that's fine too, because we're going to uh, ease the corners with a little bit of sandpaper. And if it was a fraction of a millimetre short, then uh, that rounding over of the edge with the sandpaper is probably going to hide that as well. So I'll just use a piece of sandpaper to take the very hard corner off the edge of the boards. Now I'm going to mark how much I want the board cloth to overlap the leather. Now I want that overlap to be about three millimeters or an eighth of an inch, but I want the corners to look nice and even. So I've worked out how far that is in from the corners, which is about 60 millimeters. So I'm going to mark that all the way around 60 millimeters in from the corners. And then for the spine, uh, I'm going to work out where I want it uh, and then I'm going to mark that in from the joint groove. Now uh, the it's not perfectly uh, vertical or parallel uh, so at a couple of points it's about two millimeters uh, uh, but generally it's about three millimeters. And I'm going to put that cloth so that it just covers those little marks though they usually swell and disappear anyway. Now I'm just measuring the side size of the cloth for the uh, to cover the boards, and I'll cut two pieces of cloth to size. I'm using 20 millimeter turn-ins, the same as I used for the leather, and I like to crease the one turn-in as my starting reference line. So I'll put that uh, turn-in crease right on the edge of the book, and then I'll position the cloth along the spine. I always like to put little pencil marks on my cloth. Just I, I just like to have um, redundancy in my reference marks and then I'll fold the corners over to the prick marks in the leather. Something I forgot to do was to break the cloth over the edges of the boards at the fore edge and the other end. I'll demonstrate that on the next one and I'll do that before I paste out the cloth. It just gives you uh, a line to paste to when uh, you're putting the adhesive on the cloth. I'll cut both pieces of cloth so I can do all the gluing out at the same time.
and here I'm breaking the cloth over the edge of the boards which is just putting a crease at the edge of the boards which just lets me know where I have to glue to. The hardest part for applying the board cloth I found was not sweating on the book. I did end up with one major drop of sweat landing on the leather and uh, for the rest of its life the book's going to have a little dark patch from, uh, from because of my hot weather. The first time you open the boards after putting the spine leather on, uh, the boards are going to be, the opening is going to be very stiff. So just open it gently. Uh, after it's been opened once, it'll open up fine. Now with all this opening and closing of the book, I'm worried about getting a crease in the spine. So I'm going to open the book like you should open a, uh, a book for the first time. So just go through opening a few pages at a time and pushing them down firmly and work your way to the center of the book. I probably should have done this or could have done this earlier, maybe even before putting on the board cloth. But uh, I'll do it now just... Uh, because I was starting to get a bit nervous about that. Uh, and I'll do it once again after the book is uh, completely finished. So I'm just trimming the end papers up about a half a millimetre because I know these are going to stretch a little bit and I don't want them to extend past the text block. I don't want to be able to see the um, paste down uh, when the book's closed. Now you could also fill in on the inside of the boards. I'm just going to trim up uh, a little bit, um, but I'm not going to fill them in. Uh, if you do want to, it's uh, pretty much the same as filling in 
the outside of the boards. So for this book we put down the end papers are closed. So glue out the end paper and I like to hold the end paper, put a little bit of tension on it and try and roll the board down onto it and that usually avoids any creases, but always avoids creases are found. Plus this uh, end paper is a made end paper so it's quite stiff so it's not prone to creasing anyway and thus why I've used straight PVA. If I was worried about creases then I'd use mix. Put in a fence and uh, uh, if you're going to open it up and just check for creases, turn the book over so that the uh, side that you've pasted is down. And do the same for the other side. Now put in uh, barrier sheets or fences between the paste downs and the text block and I'm going to let that dry overnight uh, under a bit of light weight. I've put the knitting needles in for good measure uh, just so um, the leather is well forced into the joints uh, either side of the tab that went into the split boards. Now we should really do a label for this book, but I'm going to leave that for another day. Though it does look pretty plain, so I was thinking about doing a little bit of a blind tooling just with a sharp bone folder. So I found my uh, sample corners, uh, and hopefully you've done a, a sample test corner as well. So you can use that to just uh, try this out with the sharp bone folder. Just put a blind line in. Um, maybe three millimeters or a bit more in from the cloth and if you're happy with that you can do it on the book as well. That's the uh, half leather library binding done. I hope you've had a chance to make one of your own and that it's worked out well for you. If you have I'd love to see the photos. The next couple of videos will be a technique videos and then we'll get back into another project. If you want to be notified of my future videos, please hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate the feedback, so if you've enjoyed these videos on the library binding, please hit the like button. I also enjoy reading the comments, and so if you've got any questions or comments, please put them below. So until next time, cheerio.